Hey gang, today I want to share with you um, something I learned recently, or I, a concept I learned uh, recently, and I think it's very helpful. Uh, one of my favorite players in recent years is a guitarist named Andy Timmons. Uh, now he's a shredder for sure, but he's a very melodic one, and he draws upon experience from the Beatles. He's a huge Beatles fan, and he's a huge Hendrix fan. So he brings all that to the table, I think, and does it well. Anyway, the, 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 co the course was Melodic Muse. You should check it out. Melodic Muse by Andy Timmons. Uh, you should check it out. It's great stuff. In any event, I want to share with you one concept, and that is uh, in soloing or composing and trying to be more melodic, um, there are at least, <laughs> but he proposes two, two components of this. One is the intellect, and the intellect is kind of what we know from our, our eyes, right? We can learn from our eyes the scale patterns and things like that that fit over a chord progression or the chord tones that work over a chord. We know that those are strong notes and we can think of the scale patterns, right? <laughs> things like that. Um, and that's, some, that's information that we can draw from, the knowledge of the fretboard. But there's another area, um, and this is in a lot of ways where our, not our thinking brain, but our feeling brain comes from, and that's uh, what he calls the aura-lect, A-U-R-A-lect, <laughs> uh, in other words, a listening. And um, he proposes, and I think that this is absolutely true, this is where most people have a bit of a weakness. We tend to rely on the intellect, scale patterns and chord grips and things like that to help us get through a composition or a solo. And that can count, kind of sound uh, somewhat mechanical. So. Um, uh, the lesson here, or the idea here, is to develop your oral act more, and, uh, and you have to combine both of them in order to be successful in creating good melodies. Um, but where does the oral act come from? Well, it comes from all of the music that we have kind of uh, ingested over the years. Like, for example, I'm also a huge Beatles fan, uh, and most of the later Beatles, uh, especially, I know most of those melodies and, and, and both the and many of the musical parts to them. I also am a huge Who fan, for example, and so I can grab a lot of melodies and themes from, say, Quadrophenia and bring those up and maybe play them even on guitar. So those are things I can think about when I'm playing. Um, there's a nice little exercise, and then I can integrate that with what I know, right? If I'm playing it in A minor, I can think about what chord tones, and I can think about those melodies as well. In any event, he, provo he proposes an interesting um, exercise, and there's many great exercises that are really simple, and that's why I love the course. But one of the simple exercises is to restrict yourself to one string. And by doing so, it helps break you out of this pattern of... You know, um, playing hackneyed licks, even if they're good, right? They're great sounding licks, but uh, even if they're hackneyed, how do you get out of that and play more melodically and not just lick-based? So that's what this is right here. I want to show it to you. And this is a progression that's going to just go F, G, A minor to G. So A minor pentatonic is going to work well. And I'm going to restrict myself to the A minor scale on the third string just by moving up and down. I'm not going to try and get super fancy on this, but I'm just going to try and use those notes. And I think if you do this, you'll find that your sense of melody also gets better. You can create different melodies. It forces you to play out of position so you can't play the normal things that your, your hands usually go in. Anyway, let me show it to you, okay? So here it is. Okay. So F. G. A minor. And G. Okay, so we'll just start playing. that that helps a lot. And you can do other 
ideas or you can try other ideas like restricting yourself to only play one note per chord or two notes per chord or playing the trying to play the third of each chord. Those are all exercises that he has in the course and I think it's an excellent course. Anyway, you should check it out. This wasn't really super deep or long, but I hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you on down the road.